Do you remember the first time you did something? Do you remember the feelings you felt? How like you felt this rush, maybe this feeling of uneasiness. You just were like almost system overload drive of like, you know what I'm saying? I remember a lot of times my first moment of doing things, usually like big moments, um, jumping off like a cliff for example, you had 30 seconds, it was like a 50 foot drop. You had like, not even 30 seconds, it was more like 15, but it felt like 30 seconds because you just were so alive. Your brain was like, oh, you were freaking out. And then once you hit the water and smack, it was over. But the memory was imprinted. You could watch someone do it a hundred times, but until you actually did it, you didn't really know what to expect. You just felt something. Um, a lot of the times people have these triggering moments of recall when a moment like that takes place, say if you're in a car crash, you can sometimes get so emotionally triggered or so emotionally imprinted that you get PTSD afterwards. Um, I don't really want to talk about that specifically today. What I really want to talk about is how what I experience and what you experience is always different. I just kind of wrote an article on this. Um, how often can we actually really recall and, re and, re and remember small little pushes of fear that we're overcoming? Small moments of feelings that we slowly had to either embrace or freak out and completely have like an anxiety attack. So many times we forget this. For example, say if you have like intense social anxiety. For me to understand that, I can understand it pretty well because I've actually experienced it and lived it. But if I never experienced that, if I just were slowly conditioned into society, I would see it as, well, uh, duh, you should just feel normal, it should be normal. But what people don't realize is those who never really enter into society, like enter in a lot and have a lot of talkative conversations go on and whatnot, this is, this is a lot of new territory they're covering. A lot of fear is being really actually prompt and pushed. And until one person can understand it yourself, you're going to just be kind of freaking out to the point you have anxiety. And most people that have anxiety, believe it or not, they do the worst thing they can do. They admit that they don't have anxiety or they say, I got anxiety, but they're like, uh, I don't even know what that means. I just got anxiety. Let me take a pill or two to stop that. And what most doctors do, they're giving pills that actually basically take your brain and fry it, slow it down, make it not as functional. So you're not as aware. Um, so many studies are actually proving this. That's why most of the talk, but there's a lot of studies proving this. Pills just slow your brain down. This is not fixing nothing. It fixes nothing at all. Kind of really pisses me off big time actually that doctors are like I'm a doctor and I'm going to do this to a human being you fools period next topic <laughs> um, those who face any new fears though the reason why you're freaking out is your brain is alive it is alert it is aware and it's trying to comprehend and understand but feelings are very hard to understand at times um, feelings are crucially hard to understand at times. Sometimes you have so many different feelings coming in that you have a system overload, an anxiety attack. Most people that face anxiety or anything along those lines, they're losing sense of actual reality and they're so caught up in that moment in their mind that they're kind of struggling to put the puzzles together. Um, this has been me a lot. Um, and the stories or factors for all of this very much so differ. And I won't get into that. The part that I really want to, I guess, echo and really explain is we need to learn to have compassion on those people, especially like younger kids, to just even adults who haven't experienced as much or who have kind of hid from the world because they feel too scared to enter in or to try this activity, try this new thing. If we would be the people that would encourage, kind of give a pre run through of, hey, you might experience this and this and this, at least in their mind they have something to connect to. Because once you have these emotions, until you have something to grasp and connect and really synchronize these feelings with thoughts and logic, it's just a whole bunch of craziness. Um, and 
I know for me, I push my fears. If I'm f afraid of something, I'm like, whoa, let me run after this. Let's push my boundaries. So then each time I try something new or enter into a new situation, any new fears that come my way is maybe small or sometimes large, but usually small, but small. But say if I would hide myself from the world altogether and I would enter into society, enter into a public speaking moment or entering into high performance level, of just doing something. If I wouldn't pre prepare myself to do this or be self-aware enough to realize I'm feeling this way because of blah blah blah, etc., I'm just gonna have a horrible moment take place. A moment that I could define as never again in my books or a moment of, well, I'm gonna learn from this lesson. A lot of us, I think we don't run towards feel fears. We just hide them, suppress them, never admit them. And we're like, uh, I'm coming into my box, my cage. Have you ever noticed though, kids especially, not always, but a lot of them are very fearless. They don't have this factor of, oh, this could happen, this horrible moment could happen. They're like, uh, I'm gonna do this until something bad does happen. Or, you know what, that's not even in my mind. I'm just gonna have fun here. I'm gonna live right in this moment. And if we could be more like that, we would enjoy things a lot more. We wouldn't have as much fear. But if we're constantly spinning our mind and thinking of, negative moments or negative potential, negative outcomes, negative anything, or just anything along the lines that's triggering a fear factor moment within ourselves, we're just slowly limiting ourselves more and more and we're slowly walking into a cage that we're making ourselves. Those who are fearless, you gotta admire, but those who are fearless, you gotta really truly understand, it is those who really push all of their fears, get over all of their fears, and understand Pretty much the majority of why they do what they do and what is happening around them. Self-awareness, again, is pretty awesome. Um, and I know I'm kind of range-paging on a little here. If we can become more self-aware, more willing to push our fears, and slowly try new concepts, new, I guess, activities even, just anything new, we're going to expand our feelings, our minds, our emotions, and just everything. And once we can really push them and continue pushing them, eventually it's going to be seen as normal. Some people wonder how people can do crazy sports. They just didn't wake up and do that. They conditioned themselves usually over years and years and years of compacted layers of experiences to get to that level. To the point they're not afraid. If they're afraid, it's usually actually more not in the sport, it's more afraid of like, oh, what is the crowd thinking? You know, you can have sport anxiety, and usually most sports anxiety comes down to what other people are expecting from them, not necessarily what they can do. They get so focused on the horrible moments or the potential negative feedback someone might give that they actually mess up in their performance, but if you would take them off the camera, take them off scene, let them just do themselves, since they have years of layers of compact experience to practice to get to that moment, they can do it well. Now, give them five or six years in the arena or performance level on a professional side, and this whole new database of knowledge or this whole new layering experience would be like, oh, now I'm used to cameras. I'm used to people yelling, applauding. I'm used to all of this, and before you know it, it's as high to them. They don't think about it as much. But by all means, it takes a lot, a lot of self awareness and a lot of pushing those fears to get to that level. Most of us, we just don't push our fears. We're afraid to. But I'm encouraging you to push them. Push them and know as you push them, you're just growing. And by all means, do everything with reason. I'm not saying don't think logically. Don't think about the negative outcomes. For example, I might go skydiving. You should probably think about what's the safety procedure to go to if something if things go you know all south but even in that scenario they won't ever allow you to go skydiving by yourself unless you're with a professional and then they slowly take that layering experience there's layering concepts and ideals and whatnot and they train you until they're like oh, he's already he's self-aware he's ready to actually handle this in life moments and even then you're spotted as you're falling by yourself and i think by that point it's five or six jumps in maybe even more i'm not too knowledgeable on that i've only spoke to one person about that subject once anyways push your fears and as you push your fears you're not going to be so afraid of your own emotions. Allow your emotions to be your gauge to understand the life around you. And by all means, turn the perspective wheel. The perspective wheel gives you different viewpoints of that particular moment. 
And that perspective will is only as good as your self-awareness and your understanding. So sometimes reach out to people, reach out to people that are experts, reach out to your best friends, get their opinions. We're not all going to have all the answers and that's the beautiful part about us humans. Our passions, our whole us is different, different in unique ways, ways that make us stand out as individuals. And that's something you should really be awesome or you should feel awesome about, I should say. Hey, thank you. If you like this video, please share it in, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens next.